When Sony announced the A7S III, they also introduced a new media type, the CF Express Type A card. Now, at the same time, Sony also came out with a CF Express Type A card reader, which they labeled the MRWG2. However, through a brilliant piece of engineering, the A7S III was manufactured with two card slots that can accept either a traditional SD card or these new Express Type A's in the same slot. Now, at the time of this filming, the only CF Express Type A card that you can buy is manufactured by Sony under their high end, tough label. An 80 gigabyte variant that's $200 or a 60 gigabyte variant that's a whopping $400. Either way, you're paying $2.50 per gigabyte. So in this video, I want to take a closer look at the CF Express Type A card itself, run some speed tests both in the camera and while it's connected to a computer, and then discuss the advantages it has over traditional SD cards when paired with the A7S III, and why I opted to pay the huge premium to go with CF Express Type A now instead of waiting for cheaper third-party alternatives sometime in the future. All right. Let's open this up and take a closer look at these things. Looking at the CF Express Type A compared to a full size SD card, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller in height and width, but it's a little bit thicker and it feels more rigid in the hand. Flipping it over, you can see the pinout on the back is exposed, similar to the SD card. When inserted into the A7S III, there's a click. This click unclick mechanism is the same, regardless of which media type that you're using. I also have the Sony CF Express Type A reader, and it came in the box with a USB type C to C cable, which is presumably capable of handling the advertised USB 3.2 speeds of 10 gigabits per second. One other feature I found interesting when I pre-ordered this is I actually didn't realize it has the same slot found in the A7S III that can take both SD cards or CF Express Type A. And this is pretty cool since it means I can get rid of my other UHS-2 card readers. And it makes the price slightly less crazy considering I paid $40 for this Apple UHS-2 card reader. Still though, $120 for a card reader is admittedly a little insane. It also really shows how Sony views this card slot that can take both the CF Express and the SD card as the future but I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Looking at the build of the card reader, you know, it's all metal housing. It actually feels really premium. Again, probably not worth 120 bucks, but at least you're getting a premium product for your money. Now let's talk about speed. CF Express Type B cards have been used in high-end cinema cameras for some time, and they even made their way into the recent Canon R5. But this is the first time we've seen the Type A variant. And while CF Express Type A uses the same protocols, it differs in form factor as the Type A cards are quite a bit smaller. And this reduction in size does actually come at a cost. Since CF Express Type A only has a single PCI lane instead of dual PCI lanes, its maximum speed is about half that of the Type B counterpart. However, the CF Express Type A is still substantially faster than even the fastest UHS-2 SD cards. UHS-2 tops out at about 300 megabytes per second, whereas the Type-A cards can do more than double that, with an advertised theoretical write speed of 700 megabytes per second. Which, by the way, is 5,600 megabits per second, since there's 8 bits to a byte. It's really important to keep this distinction in mind, since cameras deal mostly in bit rates, and that's what we're going to be talking about for most of this video. Yet SD cards and these CF Express Type A cards all advertise in megabytes per second. This faster data transfer speed means the camera can record video at much higher bit rates, and higher bit rates of course means more information is preserved when each frame is compressed, leading to better overall image quality. Mm, sort of. Bit rate isn't the only thing that impacts image quality. Some codecs require higher bit rates for the same image quality compared to other, more efficient codecs. But before we get into the A7S III codecs, Let's run through some speed tests and see how these cards perform. I've connected the Sony MRWG2 CF Express card reader to this MacBook Pro using a USB 3.2 compatible Type-C to Type-C cable. Now in the reader, we'll place the 160 gigabyte CF Express Type-A card and we'll run the speed test. And you can see we're getting really good speeds like 650 megabytes per second on the right and 723 megabits per second on the read. At those speeds, you could dump the entire 160 gigabyte card to your computer in a little over three and a half minutes. By comparison, we'll go ahead and insert our V90 Lexar UHS-2 SD card into the reader. And we can see that the write speed drops down to about 160 megabytes per second, while the read speed kind of hovers around maybe 220 megabytes per second. Now this card advertises speeds of up to 300 megabytes per second read and 260 megabytes per second write. So it's kind of pretty far off from both of those numbers. And even though the SD card is quite a bit slower, at least we've confirmed that the reader is capable of UHS-2 speeds. So I really can get rid of this Apple UHS-2 dongle. One other thing I wanted to check, since the A7S III supposedly has a USB-C 3.1 port, I was curious what kind of speeds we'd get when we mounted each card to the desktop through the camera. So to find out, I've connected the A7S III directly to my MacBook Pro using the same cable we were using for the card reader test and put the camera into USB mass storage mode. 
I've inserted the CF Express Type A card into the card slot on the A7S III. And if we run the speed test, we can see that our write speed drops pretty dramatically down to about 100 megabytes per second. Meanwhile, the read speed also suffers pretty dramatically, dropping down to about 250 megabytes per second. Swapping out the CF Express Type A card for the V90 SD card and remounting onto the system, we can see we're getting a write speed of 17 megabytes per second and a read speed of only 100 megabytes per second. These numbers are actually really interesting. That 100 megabyte or 800 megabit write speed uh, that we were getting with the CF Express Type A card when the camera was directly connected to the MacBook Pro must be limited by the USB-C interface in the camera. Because we know from the specs that the camera can at least do 1200 megabits per second when it's recording internally to the CF Express Type A card. Speaking of the internal recording speed of the A7S III, let's talk a little bit about what features the CF Express Type A card unlocks that aren't available when you're using a V90 SD card. And there's only two. The CF Express Type A card is required to shoot in the all intraframe 422 10-bit codec in either 4K 120 frames per second or 1080p 240 frames per second. That's it. In the menu, Sony refers to these two intraframe recording modes as the XAVC SI 4K file format and the XAVC SI HD file format. These all intraframe recording just means that each frame is individually compressed, meaning it's easier for you to edit since when you're scrubbing around on your timeline, your computer doesn't need to decode neighboring frames to know what should be displayed in the current frame. But the trade-off is that you end up needing much higher bit rates to achieve the same quality as long gop encoding, which combines those frames together. Switching to the V90 SD card, you can see that you can shoot in 120 frames per second at 280 megabits per second, 422 10-bit in 4K with just the V90 SD card. In this mode, Sony calls it the XAVC HS 4K. And you can see that if you tried to switch to the XAVC SI 4K with just that V90 card in there, It'll tell you that to perform this shooting setting, use a memory card higher than CF Express VGP200 slot one. However, as long as we stay in the XAVC HS 4K mode, then we don't have the problem. But keep in mind, XAVC HS 4K is a H.265 long gop codec. So you're probably gonna need to transcode it before editing. Another thing to note, if we switch back to the CF Express Type A card, is that in this XAVC SI 4K mode, you can't actually select 120 frames per second from the movie settings. Instead, it's only available under the S and Q settings. So what this means is that there's no sound. So if you go back to the XAVC HS 4K mode and go under movie settings, then you can do 120p. You don't need to go into that S and Q mode in order to use 4K 120 when you're shooting in the H.265 codec. So what that means is if you need to do some speed ramping where you want to preserve sound, you wouldn't be shooting in all I mode anyway, even if you had a CF Express Type A card. Things are a little different with 1080p 240 frames per second, and that's because Sony doesn't offer an H.265 encoding in 1080p. If you look here, this XAVC HS codec is only available in 4K. Meaning if you want to shoot 240 frames per second, then you have to drop down to the H.264 mode, which Sony calls the XAVC SHD file format. And there, if you look in the S and Q settings, you can do a frame rate of 240 frames per second at 50 megabits. So you can absolutely still shoot 240 frames per second in 1080p with just a V90 SD card. All right, so with that overview, is the CF Express Type A card worth it? And I'd say it depends on a couple of things. But to frame the issue, I think we need to first take a look at the price of the V90 cards. They aren't cheap either. The 128 gigabyte Sony Tough V90 SD card will run you $210 if you can actually buy one. That works out to $1.64 per gigabyte. If you don't already own a large capacity V90 SD card, do you really wanna shell out 210 bucks and still not get the full benefit of your $3,500 camera? Again, we're looking at an A7 IV coming out in the next six months, possibly an A7R5, maybe even an A9 III or an A9S for next year's Olympics. I'm guessing all of them will provide these same dual SD CF Express card slots. And for more photography oriented cameras, this is gonna enable faster buffer clearing, which for a high megapixel camera like the A7R5, that could end up being a game changer. So even if you put off buying a CF Express Type A card today, you're probably gonna want one in the next year or so. And even if third parties come out with them a year from now, how much cheaper are they really gonna be? Maybe a hundred bucks, you can get a 160 gigabyte card for $300 instead of $400. To be honest, I'd rather bite the bullet now and use all of the features that the camera provides today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments down below or any questions. Please consider subscribing if you wanna see more A7S 3 content. I've got a couple other videos in the works 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.